Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. Listen, I want you to take this weekend and meditate on Jesus and ask yourself this question. Jesus brought a life, and that life he has given to us. Have you received it? Now, before we go into this broadcast, I want us to call for that daily bread like the Lord commanded us to. Say this with me and mean it with all of your heart. Says, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. And I walk in the fullness of that provision. Nothing missing in me, nothing broken in me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, if Jesus brought this life and he was commanded by the Father and he obeyed in he in obedience to the Father have given us life. Now, understand, I was sharing something with you yesterday or day before yesterday that God had ordained for Jesus to come even before the world began. And his mission then was to give life to us. Now when Jesus came, or when it was time, when, or rather when man was created, see, John tells us, John chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word, was God. Now, so the word was there from the beginning with God. And God created man. And man, you know the story, man disobeyed God, sold himself as slave to the enemy, free of charge. And Satan became the God of man because Satan the every infrastructure man was dealing with was being put by the devil. Someone said, where was God when all this was taking place? Was God sleeping? No, he wasn't sleeping. He wasn't sleeping. You see, because Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Now, God had given them a perfect lifestyle. God finished the Garden of Eden, plant, put them into the garden and says, look, dress this garden Take care of it for me. And guess what? They were supposed to increase the borders of that garden, replicate what they've seen in that garden until the whole borders of the earth will be the garden of Eden. That was God's plan. But you know the story. They disobeyed God. And when they disobeyed God, they sold themselves as slaves. But God is not going to hurriedly cook up something and say, oh, let me deal with the devil. No. Because man had not received life at the time they sinned. They had not received life. You remember when they sinned against God, God drove them out of the garden and God placed a, a cherub on the way to the tree of life. Why? To prevent man from coming that way. So God knew that if man had gone that way and found the tree of life and eaten it, then man will live. Actually, man will now have the same life that God carries. And God says, no, not in this fallen nature. Because already God was dealing with Lucifer. Lucifer, I want you to understand this now. Lucifer had received life from God. Now, the kind of life Lucifer received from God was the self-existing life. 
So Lucifer can actually exist all by himself. He doesn't need to depend on God for life. Now, he was that way because God had trusted him. And God entrusted everything into his church. And so when he decided to rebel against God, God had to set up the government of heaven to bring judgments to him. God couldn't kill him because God had given him the very essence of life. You know, sometimes you're just like, God, why would you do that? But that's who he is. He doesn't hold back. He's not like a man that will say, no, can't give. No, when God gives you a thing, he has given you that thing for eternity. So the government of heaven had to sit. It is that governor brought judgment upon Lucifer. And guess what? The judgment was not destruction. There is no way you would destroy one who had received life. You can't destroy that, that kind of a person. So, what the government of heaven did was to now decide his judgment was that he would be cast into the lake of fire. So, God had to prepare a place called the lake of fire. and said that's where he would be cast into. And he would be a prisoner for the rest of eternity in that lake of fire. You want to say, why can't God just destroy him? No, because he had given him life. Now, Jesus made a very powerful statement. He said, as the Father has life in himself, so has he given to the Son to have life in himself. Meaning, the Father gave the Son to be self-existent, to be self-existent in the life that he gave to him. So, it means the Son does not depend on the Father for life. The son lives life all by himself because the father gave him that. So when Jesus displayed humility and obedience to the Lord, he did it with clear understanding. That's why he said the father has not left me alone because I do only those things that are pleasing in his sight. So Jesus has no agenda but the agenda to please the father. But he can exist without the Father. That's where God has placed him. He can actually exist without the Father. The Son doesn't depend on the Father to live. But the Son willingly submits to the Father. Now that is what is called real humility. And that's why God loves Jesus so much. But guess what? Jesus did all those things before the father to make one statement. Do you know what that statement is? Man can do this. That's why Jesus had to come as a man. He was born of a virgin, grew up as a man. He was actually a man. And he did everything because you see, God got to a point where he says, I regret making man. More like I made a mistake. I shouldn't have made man. I should have minded my business. But no. Jesus was going to remind him that this man is still good. Because look at me. I'm a man. And I obeyed you completely. That was Jesus' intercession for us. You don't understand that. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That was his intercession. Still his intercession for us. A man did this thing so men can do it. So the truth is, it's not a question of ability. It's a question of willingness. Everything Jesus did before the Father, he didn't do it because he was scared. If he doesn't do it, the Father was going to kill him. No, he did it because he was willing to submit himself to the Father. You remember John chapter 13. Let me read that scripture to you. John chapter 13 from verse 1. It says, Now before the feast of Passover, when Jesus knew 
that his hour has had come that he should depart from this world to the Father, having loved his own who were in this world, he loved them till the end. Now look at verse 2. And supper being ended, the devil having already put it into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Look at verse 3. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose up from somewhere and laid aside his garment, took a towel and gathered himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel which he gathered himself. So Jesus realized, you know, a knowing just came to him that the Father has put all things in the authority. Everybody is under your command. You, you're the one that determines if they leave or they die. It's you that the Father has given that authority. He said he saw this. He knew this. When he knew this, no, a moment of realization dawned on Jesus. And when that moment of realization dawned on him, look at what Jesus did. He didn't go bragging about it. He didn't go telling the people to worship him. Rather, he took a towel, gathered, gathered himself, took a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet. That was Jesus letting the Father know that even though I know these things, I am submissive to you. It is only you, Father, that can tell me how to use this authority. I'm not going to use this authority by myself. That was Jesus' mindset. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Everything we do, God wants us to do it willingly. He doesn't cajole us to do anything for Him. He doesn't force us to do anything for Him. So to be humble before Him is a choice. You can choose to be proud and do whatever you want to do. But to submit yourself to him and follow him closely is a choice. But you see, every choice we make has its consequences. That's one thing I wanted to know. So Jesus made the choice, even though he knew that every authority has been given to him. He made the choice to humble himself then in that day. It was his choice. And because he made that choice, the father, that's why the Bible says, he became obedient even unto death. You know what that means? You know, like you're working with someone, maybe a boss or um, a mentor, or, and you are giving your whole self to this person. And you know, people begin to think and say, look, you better find your own life. You better find your own life. Oh, this person may disappoint you. Jesus gave everything to the Father. Except the Father commands him, he will not lift a foot. Except the Lord commands him, he will not lift a finger. Jesus was that detailed. And he did it willingly. To the point that the Father says, you will die for these people. And he says, Father, if that is what you really want, then so be it. That's what the Bible says, wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. And it says, at the mention of the name Jesus, every knee bows, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. And it all happens to the glory of the Father. Brothers and sisters, we have been called into the same calling like, like Jesus. He is the one to give us life. But you see that calling? We are called in to be exactly like him. And when we surrender ourselves to him 
and begin to live our lives in obedience to every command of His. Guess what? The knowledge of God will be revealed to us. And when the knowledge of God is revealed to us, eternal life is walking in our being. My time is up for today. Praise God. I want to pray for you right now. Father, I pray for these ones watching and listening to me right now. Open up their gates of knowledge that they will truly experience you, Lord Jesus. Let them experience you, Lord Jesus, in a new way. Let no man be a hindrance of our experience with you, but let us experience you for who you really are. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.